Thanks to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this update. They've got everything you need to stay smooth and clean and nice smelling. Get their starter set for just $5 at dollarshaveclub.com slash the know. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. The big gaming news this week so far has been about Microsoft's announcement that all future Xbox exclusives will also be available day one on their subscription service Xbox Game Pass, and now some analysts are weighing in on the impact it could have on the platform. Michael Pachter of Wedbush Securities added his two cents to the mix, saying, he doesn't think it's gonna generate more Xbox sales. Pactor told Gaming Bolt, I don't think it means anything for console sales. It's a clever way to give consumers access to a lot of content for a reasonable price and nothing more than that. He went on to say that while he predicts a lift in subscriptions, he doesn't predict a lift in Xboxes sold because of it. In other Game Pass news, Xbox head of marketing Aaron Greenberg gave a bit more detail about how Play Anywhere will work for these new titles, confirming that yes, they will be playing anywhere even if you don't own them and you're just subscribing so that's pretty good news i actually kind of like the the play anywhere stuff i played it with uh with recore uh last year just to be like i'm on my pc i'm on my xbox i'm on my pc i'm on my xbox and it was just i don't know it's kind of cool Tons of gamers out there have been on a schadenfreude trip ever since electronic arts had to eat crow a little bit about battlefront 2's loot boxes and microtransactions and well, looks like that trip's just about done. Several gaming outlets have pointed out this week that EA's stock has more than recovered after that nasty dip it took at the end of last year. In fact, the company's share prices are approaching something close to a record high, hitting just under a peak they set back in August. So, seems so much to the chagrin of lots of angry gamers, the force is still very strong with electronic arts. <laughs> just wait until they figure out how to get those market transactions back in there. They're so, their stocks will skyrocket, because hey, shareholders, they don't care if you're having fun as long as you're making a lot of money for the company. Following the launch of PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds 1.0 version and official release, fans have been kind of curious to see what PUBG Corporation plans on doing with the game in the near future, and apparently, so is PUBG Corporation. The company CEO Chang Hung Kim said in a new interview with GamesIndustry.biz that they don't really have a clear roadmap for what versions 2.0 or 3.0 of the game will look like. Kim told Games Industry, we have been focusing on getting out of early access, but I think 1.0 as a number is just an iconic milestone. It was just about keeping our promise with the community because we promised we would launch as soon as possible and ensure the game had everything they wanted. 2.0 and 3.0 don't really have any meaning for us. We see PUBG as an endlessly evolving online product. It's not like we have a clear roadmap with 2.0 and 3.0. Let us know when you do, I guess. It would be curious to see what else they might add, but maybe don't hold your breath about any major upcoming changes. Fans like, you got your vaulting through windows, you got some weather, you got a new map. Th that's the end of the ideas for now, but hey, if you have some, suggest them by all means. Lost Sphere, the second outing from I Am Setsuna developer's Tokyo RPG Factory, dropped this week, and reviews for the classic RPG game are starting to make their way out. At the moment, Lost Sphere is sporting a 75 on Metacritic and a 76 on OpenCritic, which is almost exactly the same scores that I Am Setsuna received. So, if you love the shtick of the first one, you'll probably be a fan this time around. The general consensus for Lost Sphere seems to be that it properly evokes that sense of nostalgia for old school JRPGs and has some pretty fun battle mechanics. However, it's clear the developer reused a lot from I Am Setsuna and the story is a bit slow and falls kind of flat. RPG site said in its 8 out of 10 review, Thanks to its whimsical soundtrack, interesting script, enjoyable combat system, even if most of it's copied from Aya Setsuna, there's plenty of aspects found in Lost Sphere that I fell in love with. Whether you're a seasoned veteran of the genre or a newcomer looking for something accessible, you should give this one a try. Just expect nothing mind-blowing. I actually just downloaded it on Steam, so I'll give it a try. I'll probably talk about it on Glitch, please. Nice. We all knew that Breath of the Wild has sold very well for Nintendo Switch so far, like really, really well, but now we've got more numbers out of Japan to put that in a bit more context. At the moment, Breath of the Wild is closing in on 1 million sales in Japan, and analysis of previous Legend of Zelda games done by Game Design Gazette shows that this puts Breath of the Wild as the highest selling Zelda game in almost two decades in Japan, making it the best selling title in the franchise since Ocarina of Time. 
that may not be much of a surprise when you consider that it's also the best reviewed Zelda game since Ocarina of Time as well. So it looks like consumers are falling right in stuff with critics in this particular instance. Although I also still think it's crazy that Splatoon 2 is the first game to sell 2 million in Japan. That's nuts. Game is huge there, but it's a great game, so I understand. Loot box is a dirty, dirty word in gaming right now, but that's not gonna stop Ubisoft from pumping them into one of their current games because Ghost Recon Wildlands is now getting stocked full of everyone's favorite microtransaction. The battle crates will be arriving by February as part of the title's extended ops update. Ubisoft went out of their way to emphasize there are separate battle crates for the campaign and PvP and that they're only filled with cosmetic items, so nothing that's gonna break the game balance. In addition to that, crates will only unlock weapons or skins you don't already have, so that is actually kind of a nice twist on loot boxes. And these cosmetic items can also be purchased directly as part of packs in the game store. So if you have one specific thing you want, you can get it. You have to pay for it, but you can get it. Well, you don't have to pay for it, but you have the option of, anyway. Uh, interestingly enough, they haven't even announced the other details of the extended ops update just yet. So seems like they wanted to get ahead of any potential backlash by detailing the crates nice and early and talking about what they do and what they do not do. So that then they can have a separate conversation about all the other stuff. A major Dota 2 tournament is being streamed only on Facebook and players are not, well, players and fans are not happy about it. Last week, ESL struck a deal with Facebook to have its English speaking ESL 1 events streamed exclusively to the social network. And the first of those events, ESL 1 Genting, a $400,000 Dota 2 tournament featuring some of the top teams in the world is currently underway but lots of fans are upset about a variety of technical issues with Facebook, like the fact that you can't pause videos, as well as some weird audio bugs. Others aren't happy that if they've got an iOS device, they've gotta watch through Facebook's app and sign up for an account. ESL Senior VP Ulrich Schultz responded to the controversy in a tweet saying, here is how many Dota tournaments there are going to be in the future if no one is taking money for broadcast rights anymore. Exactly one, the international. Having your cake and eating it too never works. Well, okay, but here's a thought. Maybe fix some of the technical issues that people are having instead of going after your fans who just want to watch it. There's a thought. When it comes to giant MMO battles, there aren't many games that can compare to EVE Online. They have some big ones. Yesterday, it looked like one of its biggest battles ever was about to go down. It started as a giant Keepstar class citadel owned by the Pandemic Horde Alliance was attacked by their rival, the Imperium. Some estimated that the battle, which involved a whopping 6,000 players, could end up costing more than a million dollars worth of in-game items. That's a lot of spaceships if you're keeping score at home. So how did it all shake out? Well, after the smoke cleared, the final damage came out to around $4,000. Observers blamed server stability for the lack of a big battle as the issues prevented the attackers from executing their plans. Developer CCP says they'll do better, one of its designers tweeted, we'll keep working on hardware and software to enable larger and larger fights over time. And we know that EVE players will always step up to the plate and keep us on our toes. So yeah, unfortunately it looks like that climactic battle will have to wait for another day. But they have already had some really big ones. Remember the really big one that slowed down everything so much that people could see like a frame every few seconds? Quite the experience. Just the servers were that overloaded. Could the latest Cloverfield movie be coming to Netflix? That could be the case as the streaming service is reportedly in talks to acquire the movie, uh, which is called God Particle from Paramount. The movie follows 2008's Cloverfield and 2016's 10 Cloverfield Lane, both of which were successful sci-fi alien invasion films. God Particle was scheduled to release on April 20th and had a bit of a larger budget than the first two movies at $40 million. And it features bigger stars like David Oyelowo, but Paramount's reportedly been shrinking its slate of movies to be released. This wouldn't be the first time it's unloaded a movie to Netflix either. It's already unloaded the sci-fi horror film Annihilation to the streaming service, so we'll see, maybe God Particle will be next. You may have heard that Amazon recently opened a grocery store with no cashiers in Seattle. The idea is that cameras replace employees, customers are automatically charged for the products in their bags but then what's to stop people just stealing stuff? You just hide the stuff. Not much apparently. CNBC tech reporter Deirdre Bosa accidentally walked out with free stuff on opening day. 
accidentally. Uh, she said in a series of tweets that she put the items in her bag and walked out just like you're supposed to, but there was a glitch and she wasn't charged. So yeah, actually accidentally. She immediately contacted Amazon. He told her to just go ahead and keep it. And I don't know, something tells me they might need to make a few tweaks to their system because that seems like a, a pretty serious flaw in the entire concept. If you're a musician and you want yourself promoted on YouTube, because hey, music on YouTube is huge, there's a catch. You can't talk trash about the company. That's right, YouTube has reportedly asked musicians not to disparage the company if they're getting promotional support. Bloomberg reports that YouTube's requiring musicians to sign what's known as a non-disparagement agreement. That's not unheard of, but apparently none of YouTube's competitors require them. But uh, YouTube definitely does have a touchy relationship with musicians in particular over the years concerning, well, you know, money. Back in 2016, a bunch of musicians signed a petition that called for Congress to make YouTube more responsible for police and copyright violations. I wonder if YouTube has any plans to do that with other groups, like other verticals, like, I don't know, gaming, game streamers, something, because I know that a lot of gamers have issue with YouTube and talk about it very freely. So interesting. Could we, I wonder if we'll see any more of that in the future. But it's also weird to see like how the different bits of YouTube, like here's YouTube music and they do their thing and YouTube gaming does its own thing. It's even got like its own version of the site and its own features. Hmm. Anyway, that's all the news for this roundup. Uh, let us know what you think of all the stories in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday. Like this video. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe to The Know. Shout out to Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring this update. Dollar Shave Club has gone beyond just razors. Now they've got everything from hair products to body cleanser to skincare as well to keep you smooth and clean head to butt to toe. And, and also, you'll smell really nice in the process. Personal recommendation, the Ember Lavender Soap but I'm a sucker for lavender, so that's probably not too surprising. Like everything else from Dollar Shave Club, they deliver right to you, so you don't need to wander around the store looking for an employee to unlock the razor case because that's just really, really annoying. And every product is their own original stuff made with premium ingredients. You can get your first month of their best razor along with travel size versions of shave butter, body cleanser, and even butt wipes to try out for five bucks. After that, replacement razor cartridges ship for just a few dollars a month. Get your starter set for just $5 when you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash the know and hey it works for everyone you can do your face i do my legs because my mustache just like won't come in properly uh but hey whatever you want to keep smooth they got you covered